So let's stand up. <laughs> let's take a moment and just kind of relax and breathe. Would you put your feet shoulder width apart? Bend your knees, bend your knees, don't lock them, bend them, right? Find where that spine is nice and curved, not too accentuated, right? Now, without hurting your neighbors, would you put your arms up in the air? Now, bring them down slowly and keep your shoulders where they are. Oh, doesn't that feel better already? All right, now, gently place your head on top of the whole thing and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. Breathe in again and out. One last time, deep breath in and breathe out. Oh, doesn't that feel so much better? Well, since uh, the seal's already been broken, so to say, you've already sung solos, I feel like it's now my job to turn you into the impromptu TEDx Salem 2013 choir. So, it's going to be really easy. Just sing what I sing. If you have a lower voice, I'd like to sing the following. Dum 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 ba do da dum ba dum ba do da dum ba dum ba do da dum. Keep going. Now the the ladies, maybe with a lighter voice, sing this. One, two, listen. Illuminate me, illuminate me. And if you like harmonies, you can do this one. Illuminate me. Illuminate me. Keep going. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high. Like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star how I wonder what you are illuminate me illuminate me last one illuminate boom ba doom ba doom give yourself a round of applause you can go ahead and be seated so if you'd like to bring peace into your life and maybe ultimately the world, consider singing in a choir. I realize I'm a choir director. It's my job to convince people to sing. But I'm going to try to set that aside. I'm not going to give you the standard spiel. <laughs> I also don't feel like I need to convince you how powerful music and the arts are in our culture. There's a lot of TED Talks you can watch on that. Instead, I still feel, regardless of those two things, there's a real power to singing with a group of people that goes far beyond the performance benefit. As technology changes in our world, face-to-face -face personal interaction and positive interaction becomes monumental to our health and well-being. So let's start with the world. 7.123 billion people in this world. It's a lot of people, and it continues to grow. And we're constantly looking for ways in which we can better communicate with that growing number of people. 2.6 billion people have access to the internet, and of those people, 1.15 billion people are active users on Facebook. It's interesting that although we feel like we're so well connected now, we really aren't. Somehow we're less connected with the world. Human interaction is based on 93% nonverbal communication. That means only 7% of human interaction is based on the words that we're using. Think about that. 93% nonverbal communication. So, as the digital world continues to grow and we feel like we're connecting more, we're only connecting with 7% of what we normally have in a human interaction. It's no wonder that our country continues to feel divided and further apart, and it's so hard to find compromise. This is a great statistic. 18 to 34-year-olds, 48% of them will check Facebook first thing in the morning. 28% of those will do it before they even get out of bed. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Fully admit to it, right? So what is our fascination with technology? Why is it we're so desiring connection through only 7% words? I believe it's because we can edit what we say. 
Before I make the post, I can stop and think about the spelling and the grammar, make sure it's saying exactly what I want to say before I hit the post button. Well, at least a lot of us do. <laughs> this goes for all types of digital uh, communication. Instagram, we take a picture, right? But before we post it, right, we edit it, we fix blemishes, we can change things that we don't want to be in the picture. We can even delete it and retake the picture just so it's exactly what we want the world to see. We are manipulating reality. And of course, we're taking in what our friends are posting and believing that's exactly what reality might be. Music. Music is a fleeting thing. It's based on time and sound. Both are constantly moving and both are diminishing. You can't grasp music, but we can record it. We've already heard talks about multi-track mixing and how powerful the music industry is with these digital means. But if you just think about the standard recording of a track, now digitally, I can sing something, and if I don't like it, I can bend the pitch, I can fix it, I can splice it, I can make what I wanted to do in reality happen in this digital means. This then means, of course, that when we're putting our, head, our earbuds in or we're listening to music on a constant basis, we're listening to perfect representations of reality. No wonder we then put such a high standard on what we expect from ourselves and from the world around us. The voice is a powerful thing. Think about a child. When it cries, the parents pay attention. This is how it tells them that it needs something. And as we grow older, we build these words where we can communicate with the world around us. When we speak, typically people listen to us. If I order a cup of coffee, assuming I'm in a coffee shop, I'll probably get it, right? But when we sing, when we open our mouth and sing, we bring the spotlight on us. The world pays a little bit more attention, and our heart suddenly is on our sleeve. There's something powerful in singing, but there's also something very dangerous. Think about an adolescent boy whose voice might be changing. If he tries to sing in front of a group of people and his voice cracks, the tension is palpable. His embarrassment, right? Not that I've ever experienced that or anything. Bono has a great quote. He says, when you sing, you make people vulnerable to change in their lives. You make yourself vulnerable to change in your life. I love that quote. The vulnerability of singing is a power that is so just untangible. You can't explain it, but it's there, right? When we sing, we're very nervous about making a mistake. And in singing, we have the chance to fail and fail big. But Mythbusters say it. Failure is always an option. They have found that through their scientific study, when they fail, they learn more. Human beings, we're flawed. It's our imperfections that make us human. And in failing, and in failing big sometimes, it's how we learn and grow and change. Singing changes people. When we're singing, we're putting our hearts on our sleeves. We're giving us a chance to grow and become better. And what's more important, when we're singing in a group, the social dynamic has to encourage trust because we all need to be able to make mistakes in order to better the group itself. There's a fantastic Swedish study out that's talking about the body and how music has interacted with it. And it says this, singing regulates activity in the so-called vagus nerve, which is involved in our emotional life and our communication. They have scientifically figured out that when we're singing, we are vulnerable because we're tapping into the emotional core of our being. No wonder so many people are scared to sing in public. The study goes on to find out some amazing stuff. They talk about how song with long phrases achieve the same effect as yoga. You just did a little bit of it at the beginning of the talk, right? That can be a very powerful thing to center ourselves and find the connection to our body. And in another study, they found that groups that are singing the same melody, their heart rate rises and falls together. When we sing, we're actually bettering ourselves physically and mentally. We have control over our mental states. So why is it as a choir director, this is the response I hear when I encourage people to sing? I can't sing. We already know you can. Everyone in this room has already sung for us. It was fantastic. Good job. So why is it that we feel like, well, I can't sing? 
I believe technology and the digital world has just impounded this idea that whatever we do has to be perfect, but it doesn't. It, by constantly listening to music that encourages us to sing something that is way beyond what actually happens in reality, we shut down ourselves and come up with a concept that we can't sing. Just think of a reality TV show that has to do with singing. We're literally voting the people off that we don't think meet the expectations. I think it's horrible as a choir director. <laughs> but singing in a choir is so powerful. It can overcome a lot of this. By singing in a group of people, we become an individual, a part of something bigger than ourselves. Eric Whitaker talks about a shared vision. When you come together with a group of people and you work on music that challenges you, you are soon focused on something that is larger than life. It's larger than something that one person can do on their own. In doing that, we can break down the boundaries that divide us. Politics, religion, the things that maybe we'd be arguing about otherwise just go by the wayside when we're focusing completely on music. And that's not even talking about the power of singing in a group of people has on the world around us. This is the great term, choir love, that comes out of these groups. I found that a group that cares and loves for one another makes fantastic music, not the other way around. When you've sung in a choir, you understand this term, choir love. So let's get to some statistics. 42.6 million singers, this is a 2009 study from Chorus America, in over 270,000 choirs across this country. It shows us that America, one of America's greatest pastime, is singing in a choir. But if you dive a little bit deeper, with an estimated population of 305 million in the U.S. in 2009, that's only 15% of the population singing in a choir. As a choir director, I think that's abysmal. That means out of the 100 people in attendance at this TED Talk, maybe only 15 might sing in a choir. So why wouldn't you sing in a choir? We know that there are health benefits to it. We know that you can find some peace in the world and connect to your body physically and mentally. We also know that it counters culture by allowing us to connect face-to-face -face with people. It's that 93% that we're missing through digital technology. Our public schools and private schools have fantastic choral programs that our, our kids can sing in. Colleges and universities provi provide opportunities for everyone, town and ground choirs and choruses. Of course, your religious institution, they've got choirs singing every week, if not more. So you have no excuse, 270,000 groups across this country to sing in. So why don't you consider singing with a group? And if you're in a group, convince your director to take the group into the public. Find a stranger, spread some glee into this world. Counter culture, counter the digital world, change the world, sing. Thank you.